Welcome to the Be The Best You podcast. The sole purpose of this podcast is to teach, inspire, and motivate everyone to be the best versions of themselves. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Be The Best You podcast. I'm your host, Larry Dawson, and today we got a good friend of mine on. What's up, Mr. Robert Aris? Hey. How you doing, brother? Nice to meet you, man. Good to see you be here. And uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Before we dive in to this episode, let me say, if you're watching this episode or listening to this episode, please make sure you take the time to like, share, subscribe, leave us a comment, tell us what you think about this episode, talk to us about what you might want to hear us uh, discuss in the future, different topics, different guests, give us an opportunity to meet the demands. All right, man. So let's dive right into this. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you have going on, what got you to this point in life, all those good things, man. Well, I'm Robert with RC Heating and AC. I have uh, own a heating and air conditioning company now for uh, about 14 years, licensed in North and South Carolina. Um, I love what I do every day. is totally something different. Um, and, man, just love the... the helping people out at the end of the day, getting them back to heating or air conditioning. It's such a good feeling, rewarding feeling. Are you originally from the Carolinas? No, I'm originally from, born in New York and raised in New York City. Um, and been here in the Carolinas since uh, 2000. Well, after September 11, I moved out of uh, New York City. After 9-11? After 9-11, yes. And then um, after 9-11, moved to Columbus, Ohio. That's where I learned to trade. And then I um, lived there for about four years. Didn't really like the weather, so I moved down to the Carolinas. That's where it's nice and, and hot. What got you into the heating and air business? Um, what I did was I answered an ad back in, uh, in 2009. They still had paper ads and stuff like newspaper ads. So I answered an ad looking for a new career. And I ended up um, answering the ad. And um, they just loved the way that I uh, kind of talked and presented myself, and um, that's how it all got started. I, I worked from, a, from the ground up. At that time, did you already have experience in the heating and air, air field, or it was just completely new to you altogether? Yeah, completely new altogether. Uh, follow my, my dad's advice was to get into the trades, be a plumber or electrician, and um, I ended up choosing HVAC, and um, I didn't know anything about it. So, it was What was you nice. doing before you started all that? I was a, uh, uh, I worked for the city of New York as a bus driver. So I was driving a big old bus, picking up passengers in the street. It was, that was a stressful job. <laughs> I bet so. <laughs> meeting a lot of different people though, right? Yeah, definitely met every day. We meet different people and a lot all of All walks people. of life and all different nationalities and cultures and individuals. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's amazing how uh, being in New York City, there's a melting pot. So you get to... You know, there's so many people from different parts of, like, for example, India. And then you get to learn how this one speaks this language or that language, you know, and, and their, their cultures. It's really cool know. getting to meet a lot of different cultures and nationalities and, 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 and people. I enjoy that. That's why I like traveling so much. Um, so what do you think when you came out here to the South? <laughs> you know, I, I everyone said it was like a little New York City being in, in Charlotte, you know, and, and but I liked the... Uh, able being able to see it grow mm -hmm. and um you know you coming down to the south you make the best out of it you know i hear a lot of people come down here oh there's nothing to do nothing to do i'm like you just gotta look you know and it's so nice it's funny to it. me when i hear people say like there's nothing to do i wonder to myself what are they talking about like are you talking about like partying in nightclubs and type of stuff because you know when you're actually talking about living life you know, we have oceans, we have mountains, we have lakes, we have rivers, we have land, we have nature, we have cities, we have stuff to do. I mean, it, this in Charlotte, we have a professional hockey team, a professional football team, a professional basketball team. We have the NASCAR Hall of Fame. You have a racetrack down the road where they have races a couple times a year. You have the U.S. National Whitewater Center, the lake right here out back. You know, Carowinds, the seventh big amusement park in the United States of America. The ocean, three hours that way, three hours that way, three hours that way. The mountains, an hour that way. Uh, major cities, you, know, you got Greenville, Myrtle Beach, Charlotte, Asheville, like Raleigh. 
so I, it's it's weird to me when I hear people say that you know, there's not a lot to do. I think to myself, there's an abundance of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Get out of the damn clubs and go live life a little bit. There's all kinds of life to live out here and all kinds of cool stuff to do. All right, man. So let's dig into some of these questions I have for you. So the first question is. You own one of the biggest and most well-respected heating and air companies in the area. What got you in, well, we just kind of touched on that. What got you in that field to start with? But I guess more, more so, so we'll get a pivot to this question is, if you look your company up on Google, you have a five-star rating. That's hard to maintain because people are very petty and will pick, uh, nitpick about everything these days, right? But yet, you know, you have maintained a five-star rating on Google. You've been around for quite some time. You're a fairly large company. So you deal with a mass amount of people. So obviously you're getting a lot of reviews. How have you kept your company so successful, so highly rated and maintained that great customer service relationship? The way I've, I've done that is by instilling in the technicians to become friends before uh, doing business. And what that means is by, hey, let's, you know, we, we have a process that we go through. And then that process is to, part of it is to, hey, you know, how are things going? Get on a personal level. And I just try to um, get them into that feeling, that mode, like when you go to a friend's house, a family's house, you sit down and you relax and you talk with them and things like that. And that way you're there, yes, to help them get them air conditioning up and going or maintenance, whatever the case may be, but get to a different level not just get in there, get to work and then get out, you kind of build that trust. And that's what's super important. And that's how you you give that extra um, sense of uh, um, kind of like success to that you did a good job for that homeowner, for that customer. As someone that has my hands tied into the construction industry and has done trades myself in the past and trade labor myself in the past, I understand that there's certain um, trade labors that demand a higher dollar. Heating and air is one of them. Plumbing is one of them. There's just cert- certain specialty crafts. Electrical work is one of them, where you have to pay more because you have to have, be specialized. You, you can't you can't let anybody just come work on your AC unit, you know. So, with the high markups, the the cost of of those how have you maintained keeping a fair balance on your price and and not being like let's just i I, i'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus but like the brothers heating and air and morris jenkins and place like that that you know their prices are extravagant where if you compare prices at your company they're a lot better how have you been able to like walk that fine balance of still you know keeping a successful profit margin line but then not taking advantage of the customers you know, I always say, hey, I want to get to that million. Everyone everyone wants to make a million dollars, right? And you don't, I always say, hey, I don't want to make it on my first customer. We're going to do it little by little. Mm-hmm. So we are going to make some money and I want my technicians to make the most money that they can. So you hire the right people to get in there. Hey, this is our goal. This is where we want to get to. And I always say, hire people that are more, uh, that are more qualified than you, than more, uh, that are smarter than you. And, um, and then little by little, that'll get us to where we want to be, you know, and with time. Um, before, before I dive into these next questions, something that I don't think maybe I've touched on enough with all of my guests, maybe some I have and some I hadn't, but I want to dig into this a little bit real quick for going further. I'm big on life being a teacher and teaching us, you know, everything we need to know about life. And I'm kind of a deep thinker, and I think a little bit different than other people. And I wonder, as a business owner and as someone that has reached the heights of success that you have with your business, I know that you've used coaching in your past, business coaching, fitness coaching, a different type of coaching, and you've done, you've brought in people to help you be more successful. How much has life, you know, you being a bus driver in New York City, dealing with a lot of people, how much has life itself taught you how to handle these search, these situations, starting over, running the business, making it successful, dealing with people on an everyday basis, and just who you are and how you think as an individual? Definitely life has uh, taught me a lot from going to church at a young age. You, I was... Uh, we would do public speaking, reading the Bible publicly in a small group or a large group of setting, 
that'll help me and help others to be confident in other and being in front of other people. Um, just life in general through experiences. Um, I'm not a big reader. I've never read a book in my life. So what I've been doing is um, I hire a uh, business coach. So we still use a business coach. You know, they have a big team that tells us what's going on out there, how to price things. You know, um, for example, um, Amazon. You can you can get everything online. You say, hey, how how you can tell any of your uh, phones how much is this part? You know, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. So we've changed our structure into how we price things. So having those business coaches to help you and help me to, to get better in my uh, career. And then whatever I learn, I'll share that with my teammates and my, my people that work for me. Would you say that driving a bus in New York City and meeting all those different people um, has helped you in the business world when you go into different homes and you meet different people from different walks of life, be able to talk to them, to feel comfortable with them, to reach them and to be able to treat them like a person? Do you feel like that human customer experience and those life lessons you're taught, do you think that's helped you with your business? Yeah, definitely. From being on time, when you're a bus driver, you got to be on that time, you're on a time frame, to dealing with people and um, listening to people, what people say and stuff like that. And you'll see all kinds of um, people all, all all across from every part of the world, you know. I I think I go back and I I think about um, where people are from, and we talk about India from Europe, you know, and, and all kinds of walks of life, and and you'll learn from a lot of people and listen to their experiences, how hard they had to struggle to get here, and they just love being here, you know. And it's like, man, we have it. We're, we're really fortunate, you know. So don't get me started on all that. <laughs> These entitled Americans, man. <laughs> They take everything for granted, right, Bambina? <laughs> Tell them, Bambina. Don't be quiet over there. Speak up. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into some more of these questions. The next question I have for you is, what is the best piece of advice that you could give someone to run a successful business? You know, the, my advice is to definitely work hard. Start from the bottom, doing uh, guerrilla marketing. Uh, learn, be the best at that position that you want to do. If you want to be a heating and air man, be the best that you can be. Be the best you? Be the best you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, from that point on, and then just doing the little bit of things to door knockers, to growing your business, you know, but being the best person that you can be to invest in yourself. Isn't it funny, like, how certain people think that their business could be above certain things. I remember getting funny looks a couple years ago when I was telling people that I was passing flyers out on mailboxes and me just thinking in my head like, why are you looking at me funny? Isn't the goal ultimately to have the most successful business possible? So if that is the ultimate goal, why wouldn't you try all kinds of different things? Why wouldn't you get business cards and pass them out to people you need? Why wouldn't you you know, either do it yourself or pay someone to put flyers in someone's mailboxes. Why wouldn't you do social media ads? Why wouldn't you use every single platform that you can get your hands on to help build your business? Because just because you open a business doesn't mean the sky's gonna open and customers are gonna fall into your lap. You still have to generate business. And not only do you have to generate business, there's other people out there that do what you do. There's other people out there that do what I do. There's other people out there that do what Bambino does. So we're not only, you know, trying to generate business, we're also in competition with other people that have the same businesses with us. Like why should they choose your heating and air company over another heating and air company? So, you know, we're constantly trying to get our business out there. Like when I pass out my flyers, I tell people, you know, if you contact me based off of this flyer, you get 10% off. So, you know, that's just a strategy on my end to help generate more business. Cause you can never have enough avenues bringing you more business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started, you know, the way I started it was, I had a full-time job. I worked for the government. I worked for at the city of Charlotte, um, at, at the airport, and there was over 16,000 people that worked there. So it was a great opportunity to, I was doing the heating and air conditioning there. So what I would do is I would give out business cards. I would get the, that section of the airport fixed. Yeah. And I'd be like, hey, by the way, for you or your friends, if they need heating and air, give me a call. Yeah. And um, at the same time, I was waiting for that moment to to release and be like, okay, now I'm ready to go and do my own thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it did take, it was not easy. 
you know, it did take uh, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, and, and uh, really hard work. And you did, work. and you did what I say that most people should when they first start off. If you listen to any of my podcasts, I've said this repeatedly that when you first start, unless you've just saved, 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 saved for that opportunity and your savings is really good. If you're going through that transition period, opening your own business, I've always said that you should have a fine line of transition where you're still working your main job and transitioning into opening your own business. That way, there's a little bit of safety net at the beginning to help you during that transition period. It sounds like that's what you was doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's hard for someone that's always worked for someone to start their business cold turkey with no backup because you're going to run into things as a business owner or entrepreneur that you didn't necessarily see you know, when you was planning everything out. Yeah, and I laugh. Sometimes we, we run into guys that they get that license. Oh, I got my contractor's license. I'm quitting next month. This yeah. this twenty five dollar back then twenty five dollars yeah. an hour or thirty dollar an hour job yeah. and, and get started. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. It's not <laughs> like that. You know, and that's what you you start learning. And immediately when I was I thought it was the summertime and I'm making this money, and then the fall hit and I was like, uh oh, Whoa. you know. It just I need some nobody. heater to go out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got I had to start calling people. The yeah. phone calls weren't coming in, but that's where I, there was a disconnect somewhere. But then I learned it, you know, little by little, and um, and, and that's where I'm at here now. So, well, good, good for you, man. Yeah. All right. So the next question I have for you is: I know you've used coaches before, from business coaches to fitness coaches. What's your opinion on using coaches to help you better yourself? I think, you know, you know, coaching, when you can afford it, definitely get into it. Even if it's just one visit or two visits. A lot of coaches now, just that's investing in yourself, investing in your company. Um, you know, I've went ahead and, and spent, we, I have my coach since 2017. And, um, you know, they've been excellent. Everything that we've done, executed, what better person... This is a company, we mimic a company that makes over a hundred million a year. What better company for them to make all the mistakes and then say, hey, Robert, this didn't work. We, we recommend that you use this, do this platform or do that. It's excellent. It works really good. So they've made all the mistakes and now we learn from them. We have, code, we, uh, have a weekly meeting and just giving us um, advice on what, how to be... They call it maximum yield. How to become the maximum yield company. Get the most out of what you have to give to your guys so you can make the most money and everyone is successful. Um, but just like working out, you have a coach. It doesn't stop in six months. Sometimes you'll fall off and that will happen. If I quit using my coach, I'm just going to fall off and then go into my bad old habits. And I'm not saying it's easy. It's just like working out, eating. There's a lot to it. You got to every day grind on it, you know, and you have to keep going. Uh, me, last year, I quit using my coach. And then what happened? Uh, my health coach. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? I, I quit eating. I quit working out. Life get in the way, you know. But if I would have still had my coach, he would have kept, I would have kept going, motivated, you know. So definitely, it's important. It's funny, man. Some of us are motivated in some ways. In some ways, we're not. Sometimes we need to kick in the butt. Sometimes we need motivation. All of us get that from different places. And it, it's, it, it's cool hearing you break that down of why you think it's good to use a coach. I also think it's good to use a coach, whether I'm the user or I'm giving the advice, because obviously you know that I do coaching as well but i think it, it's a good tool all around to have no matter whether it's leadership or life or fitness or business it, it never hurts to have successful people in your corner you know michael jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time he had a fitness coach by his side an athlete trainer and he also had a sports psychologist by his side and you know tim grover is pretty famous for the things he did with michael jordan but you know this man was catching it you know in several different areas from different people helping pushing him to be great i remember watching rose nama Yunus's story you might not know who she is but i watched her when she was a young girl on a show called the ultimate fighter and she ended up losing the final of the ultimate fighter and she was an okay fighter you could tell by watching her fight she had extremely skilled 
uh, attributes. Like she, she really had some a serious skill set. But there was like maybe a little something missing there because she didn't do quite as good as she should. And then she ended up becoming the champ. She shaved her head. She ended mm -hmm. up becoming the champion. And you'd watch her come to the ring, and she'd be going. She would be going like this over and over. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. So I watched her interview with her husband, Pat Berry, and herself, and they were all talking and everything. And what made her finally turn that corner and unlock her greatness was seeing a sports coach, a sports psychologist that got in her head and told her that your skill set isn't the problem, your mindset is the problem, and helped her flip that switch mm -hmm. mentally. To, she convinced her, like, you are the best. You have all the skills. You're just getting in your own way and not executing. And she became, she's a two-time world champion now, and pretty much everybody knows who Rose is at this point. And it, it, it's just crazy to me sometimes when you talk to people that are, like, treading water or in the middle of the road, and they don't agree with using coaches, and they think that's a waste of time. And I think to myself, no, what you're doing is a waste of time because you have not unlocked your full potential. And if you have not been able to unlock your full potential yourself, why not bring someone else in that could be pointing out like, hey, you know you could do this better, this better, and this better. And if you would change these things, your life or your business would be much better. So I think that it's crucial for a lot of people. And then one key thing that you said is invest in yourself. Unfortunately, people will invest in themselves the wrong way. Like earlier in the conversation, we were saying how people from up north said there's not a lot of stuff to do down here. How they invest in themselves is they'll go out to clubs and party. They'll buy a bunch of liquor and put in their body. They'll go out and spend two, three hundred dollars partying a night and, and waste that money, not think nothing about it, but then talk shit about someone who wants to hire a coach or go to the bar and have a couple of drinks and leave with a ninety dollar tab and, and not think about hiring a coach or go eat a bunch of food that's bad for them that they shouldn't be putting in their body instead of eating healthy and investing healthy in their body. So people will invest, they'll go on Amazon and shop and have packages delivered to their front porch, a package, two packages, three packages every day buying these items that they might not ever even use. When they could invest and in make their life better and bringing someone else in that could help tighten up those loose ends for them and you know spin them in the direction that Rose went in from being someone with a skill set mm -hmm. that was mentally lacking that all of a sudden flipping that switch and becoming the greatest version of themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it goes back to you know making if you get that coach, you don't have to spend all these thousands of dollars you know, and they just go down to two. Somebody's already made that mistake for you and he's gonna tell you this is what you need to do. So here in, in, in the U.S., we have such good coaches. It's just a matter of your mindset, too, like you said. If you put your mindset where you want it to go, you're gonna, it's going to follow, and you're going to be successful. You, that's like the American dream, you know? You just have to work hard at it and make the right, and not just go with the first person. Do some research, you know? There's so many people out there. I just traveled back from uh, California because I wanted to see what a... Uh, we got a guy that... Um, just came off the boat six uh, he was uh, about six years old his older brother was seven years old and came in illegally but, you know now he's uh, in his low 30s mid 30s and he brought a company from zero to f in five years zero to 50 million dollars so I was like hey he's inviting people to come and see how he did it or learn from him <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take some time out mm. and you know and fly out there and see he's and, and I didn't have to pay anything for that yeah. So that, those are things, there's so many things around us. You just have to pick up the phone and ask and call and go online. Yeah, two you know? weeks ago, we was out of my boat and you was telling me that you was going out to California for that. How was that? How was that experience? Oh man, it was a, a really good experience. He's not the only one that I've done that with, but this was the best. You know, he's um, the best person to sit down and his, his people that um, spent the time to talk with us. It was a really eye-opening experience on how you can get there, and, and, and we learned so much, you know, and we're looking forward to, and just like we learned so many things, you can't impl implement everything into the business, you know, just one thing at a time. Make it the best of what you learned from him, one thing at a time, make it the best, okay, now let's move on to the next one, you know, and you'll just, and what's so nice about him is that it's the culture that he, creates you know for his people and a lot of I've heard that from other people if you make your culture number one where the guys really want to work there and they feel really happy they want to come to work they're gonna ultimately take care of your customer so that's what I'm doing now you know from little things like taking Sundays off to spend time with the family and 
rest days. I, you know, I try to, we work really hard in the summertime, six days a week, you know, 10, 12 hour days. This is the time when people need us the most. We're like firefighters. So I spend that time um, trying to make them feel comfortable. We, we brought in Gatorade snacks and stuff like that at the office. Now I'm implementing a little music, pumping up the, the atmosphere <laughs> a little bit, you know? And yeah. So those little things make a difference. Yeah, it uplifts people. Right, yeah. yeah. You don't want a bunch of workers that hate coming to work, <laughs> right? Right, right. <laughs> So the next question I have for you is, you are a minority business owner. Do you think that has helped you or hurt you? It has helped me. The good thing with me is that I speak Spanish also. My parents are Puerto Rican, but I was born in New York City. So even my, uh, my nephews and everybody, I say, hey, you know, you guys don't want to speak Spanish, learn Spanish. Why? Because with me, I, my primary language is English, but then I'm very fluent in Spanish. I learned it in church and at home. And guess what that means? I get to speak to Spanish speaking families and I advertise to them. And then what does that mean? Ultimately, it means more, more customers, more money, you know? So what other people can't touch, I can touch them. So that's how it's helped me. And I encourage that for other families. I, I've met some other technicians that are French. I'll say, hey, if you speak French, let's go ahead and we'll hire them on and advertise towards the French community. And that'll bring on, we'll just send him to those customers, you know? So definitely it has helped me. That's a good marketing strategy. It, you know what I love, man? I love situations like this where like the three of us are in this room. Um, you know, all of us have different ethnicity backgrounds um, and we're all successful and we've all done things our own way. And I appreciate that about both of you. And hearing you say that, I really appreciate that. And the reason why I really appreciate that, me and Bambino was talking about this before too, is because people in America are very entitled. And people in America make excuses for everything. They have reasons why they can't be successful for their, you know, their relationships, to their business, to their careers, to their education, to their everyday life. And excuses after excuses, because I'm this, because I'm that, because blah, 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 blah. So it's really cool when I'm talking to Bambino or I'm talking to you and you guys will tell me like, man, you know, damn, damn that BS, like put the work in, do the work. Like, I, man, I talk to people, I make stuff work. Man, I got a good attitude. I never have problems with people. It's so refreshing to hear you two guys talk and to say things like that and to hear like people being like, man, I'm not with that victim mentality stuff. I'm not going to sit here and give you a bunch of excuses why we can't do this and can't do that. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to tell you how you can do it. I'm going to tell you why you can, how you can use it to your advantage, how you can be successful. I really appreciate that about both of you guys. I'm thankful that I know both of you guys. And I wish that more people would listen to the Bambinos and to the Roberts. And if you want to listen to me, listen to me. And what we're saying about how you can be successful. No matter what the odds are stacked against you, you know, you being from, you know, a, a Spanish family and coming from New York City and being a bus driver to now all of a sudden owning one of the most successful businesses uh, in the heating and air industry in the Carolinas. To me, you know, having the struggles of my life and where I came from and spending 13 years away and coming home with the right mindset to match the mentality of what you was just saying and being successful and having an amazing relationship with my wife and, and, and my family, beautiful home and all the stuff that I have and all the blessings that I have and being able to do this podcast. Man, I, if you guys are watching and listening, understand that you're in America the things that are at your fingertips. Don't let the news and don't let people and their negative mentalities rub off on you and make you think that everything is doom and despair because I promise you that if you put in hard work and you have the right attitude and the right mentality, just like Bambino has done things his way, just like I've done things my way and just like Robert has done things his way, you can be successful and you can overcome anything. And by the way, I want to make this clear. Bambino is a black man sitting right here. <laughs> He's Nigerian, so don't even hit me with that bullshit when you sit there and look at the color of my skin and say, yeah, it's easy for you to say you're white. Tell them, Bambino. Tell them what they can do. <laughs> all right, my rant's over. I'm done ranting and raving. No, but in all seriousness, man, I just want to see everybody succeed. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what religion you are. 
I don't care what your ethnicity is. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what your economic status is. No matter who you are, where you came from, or what you've done in life, you have the opportunity to turn your life around, to be better, to be successful, to do good. Every single day is another opportunity to be the best version of yourself, to capitalize on all the things that are our finger, on our, at our fingertips here in America, all the opportunities we have, all the money that's out there to be made, all the relationships that are out there to be gained. There's just endless opportunity. Let's just come together as people and let's make it happen because with the right mindset, we can do anything. All right, I went on a tangent, but let me, let, me, let me get me back on course here. All right, number six. I know that you're into motivational stuff. So what is the most powerful piece of motivation that you've ever come across? The um, one that I've seen is um, Simon Chesnick, I think is his last name. I got a funny name. It's, and it's the most, it's a good video. That's how he started, and it was, it was his why. You know, I... Um, my son, I wanted my first. It was my family, my son, and um, you know, for whatever reason, his life, he didn't want to go and in, get into heating and air. Maybe I pushed him when he was young. Come on, son, let's get into this nasty dungeon crawl space. Oh, no, these spiders and spider webs when he was eight, nine years old. Yeah. Well, let's get in this hot attic. Come on, let me show you what I do. You know, yeah. he just stop. He'll stop and sit at the top of the steps. Oh, I see what you do, Dad. I ain't going up there. It's too hot. <laughs> But now my why is my, the people that work for me. You know, the guys that work for me, we have, uh, like for example, we have a team of installers. They both have families. So I want them to succeed. I want them to be the richest that they can ever be, you know. And, and everybody that's on my team is super important to me. So that's my why. And, and watching that video, that was a big motivation. It's like, you got to find your why. Why do you do this every day? And that was him. I thought it was super cool the other day when you told me that one of your technicians was making six figures. I was like, good for him, man. Mm -hmm. Good for you for giving him that opportunity and good for him for taking advantage of that opportunity. You know? So I appreciate that. Bambino, quick question. What is the most powerful piece of motivation you've ever come across? It stuck with you in your head. Never stop trying and learn to fail when you fail. Look for the reasons why you fail and what you can do to make it better. And I think in regards to the I have seen a book, I don't know who wrote it, but the question is what is your why? Why what am I why? doing this? Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the author. I listened to the podcast and I'm actually trying to do a second listen because the way it breaks it down makes you realize that there's more to life than just decide on what you want for yourself and just assume it's already there be present with it and just wake up every day and keep grinding until you get that your why and then as you grow as you evolve your wives your wives will change so why it change you recognize your why is changing then work towards getting that why so that's my like I resonate to that that particular aspect Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with both of them. And when I was locked away, I had these visions of these things that I wanted to do. I made a promise that I would change my life and I also made a promise that I would spend the rest of my life trying to help other people change their lives and to give that knowledge and understanding to other people. And I spent a lot of time doing that and I still do that. I have veered away a little bit from doing the individual stuff as, as, as much as I used to. I guess the podcast and other avenues are, are my ways of doing that now. but still deep rooted in my heart i want to help as many people as possible but the first person i ever needed to help was myself because i wasn't right and i needed to get right and so you know digging deep inside to try to become a better person just like you know you strive to have a successful business or you uh, strive to have a successful relationship with your kids or, or your parents or your wife or husband i have this serious desire to be the best version of myself and i know it sounds corny because the name of the podcast and my company is Be The Best You, but that's not by accident. I named the podcast and my company Be The Best You for a reason, because I feel like that we all have the ability to be the best us, but we have to work on it every single day. And it's not a part-time thing, it's a full-time thing. And you have to hold yourself accountable. And you have to ask yourself every day, am I doing enough? Am I being a good enough husband? Am I loving my wife enough? Am I being a good enough father? Am I being a good enough friend? Am I being a good enough businessman? Am I being a good enough podcaster? Am I doing enough? Who am I as a human being? Am I understanding life for what it is? Am I taking in nature and all the things that we're blessed with? Am I enjoying the water, the trees, the birds, the wind, the air, the things that we're blessed with? 
what that we take for granted every single day. So just you know, being the best you. But I remember when I first came home, you know, no one believed in me. I had no family and no one to really have my back like that. Shout out to my other daughter Silver Dawson because I know she did. But I know that nobody really believed in me. I thought that I would be successful with a lot of the things that I had in my head because I had a lot of stuff in my head, right? And so I read this thing one time and it said, hustle so hard your haters ask if you're hiring. And I sat back and I thought about that and I was like, hmm. Okay. Right? So when you start at the bottom <laughs> and you, you scrape and by, that shit sounds good when you read it. But then all of a sudden a year goes by, two years goes by, three years goes by, four years go by, you're opening up businesses, you're giving speeches, you're buying new stuff, you're making moves, you're escalating, you're getting to a certain point, and then all of a sudden you start noticing like, oh shit, my haters really are asking if I'm hiring now. And like, I never, I've never forgot about that. I never forgot about that silly little, uh, maybe it was like a meme or something I read, but I ne that always stuck in my head, man. And to this day, it still does. Well, I couldn't even imagine being up, you know, at that point where you wanted to take off. So you have this energy and you, you wanted to explode out. And yeah. then no one wants to give you a, a, a hand. Not, you're not asking for a handout. Just asking for a little Just hand. an opportunity. Just a little, you know, a little. I'm going to tell you a quick story. So I was trying to find jobs and I got out. Man, I turned like 75 applications. Didn't even get a single call back. I ended up getting, working three jobs. But this is, so this is how the first one happened. I was going to gym, to gym, to gym. And I was telling people like, Hey man, I'm certified, I'm licensed, blah, blah, blah. But like, then they would like see my <laughs> stuff. It wouldn't give me opportunity. So I went in one day to a Planet Fitness. I was talking to this lady. Her name was Noelle Phillips. And I asked her for a job if they were hired for training and stuff. And she said no. And I was like, all right, okay. And, um, you know, I was looking her straight in the eyes when I was talking to her. And I could tell she was staring me straight back in the eyes. I went to walk out and she was like, hey, come here for a second. And she's like, what's up, man? What's your story? And I was like, man, I just got out. I've been locked up 13 years. I'm trying to get a job. Nobody wants to give me an opportunity. Nobody. So she looked me straight in the eyes and she was like, she was in special forces. She was a Marine and she did some other stuff. And she said, she said, I'll tell you what. She said, come back up here tomorrow and see me. Hmm. Came back up the next day, talking to her face to face. She said, you're hired, you start tomorrow. Right, and then a guy that I was locked up with, he started a roofing company and he gave me a job roofing. So working at that gym and then roofing, and then I started training people on the side, you know, working those three jobs for a while, living off of one paycheck, saving the other two paychecks, and did that for a little while, sleeping in my car. But, you know, like you said, I, I'm feeling like, ah, I'm gonna rip out my shirt and just go. I have all this, I'm like, got all these goals, these dreams, I'm gonna explode, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that. But like, everyone just wanna hold their head, their hand out on my head and hold me down. <laughs> That, that, you know, I think that probably would break and frustrate a lot of people, but I just use this motivation. My mindset was, I don't give a damn if you lock 10 doors. I'll kick all 10 down and I'll make an 11th door and kick that one in too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep pushing. Push keep, it through. Keep pushing. pushing. Yep. All right. So, number seven. Do you set long-term and short-term goals? If so... How important do you think it is to incorporate that into your life? I do. I do have uh, long-term goals, and um, you know, in business, and you know, whether we want to hit a number, that's the only way uh, for you to start getting creating those long, uh, short-term goals. That so we do. Last year, I started a five-year goal. Hey, in five years, I want to make fifty million dollars. How am I going to get to fifty million? We get down, all right, short-term goals, let's see, we break it down from yearly to monthly to every weekly to daily goals that we hit. We look at the forecast, what we did last year to this year, we should be doing this, let's add another two or whatever the numbers are. And um, that's on the business side of things. And um, always I set goals for uh, health-wise to take care of myself health-wise and or at least um, eat right, you know, every set an alarm to eat every, get my protein synthesis every two to three hours, you know, set alarms to do that so I can stay, remain healthy. Um, so yeah, goals are super important. You know, if you just go by the seat of your pants, you ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just gonna fail miserably. And you, you need those other people. And you can't do it by, your, I can't do it by myself. When you talk about hitting $50 million, right now we're about to hit 
we're on track to make $3.8 million. To make that, uh, it's just not by myself. I have a team that we that's going to help me get there. This is my goal. This is my outlook. This is where I want to set. Sharing with the team where we want to go. This is my goal. And then they're going to help us help you get there. Well, so that's actually really good. I'm glad you broke that down for people. Outside of business, how important do you think goals are for like your personal life, your fitness life, your family life? How important do you think it is to set those type, same type of goals outside of business? Yeah, it's super important. I've got, um, you know, it, from hey, my goal is to take care of myself and, you know, being open, talking to other people, sharing what you want. You can't share everything, you know, especially if it's a competitor or something. <laughs> but if it's a person, you know, going through the same struggles, too. I got a friend that he just told me, hey, man, you know, I got to quit drinking beer. Um, I love beer. He's not an alcoholic or anything, but health for health situations, uh, I got to quit drinking beer. I got to eat right. Man, I'm not going to make it. And he's, you know, I like to be around older people. He's in his 60s. You learn from people like that. And I encourage people to be around people that are older, more wiser than me. But, you know, hey, when he tells, shares those things with me because we have a really good relationship, now I'm going to help him reach his goal of not drinking a, a beer. Hey, let's drink water. Or, or the doctor said only one beer. Then let's just do one. You know, hey, I'm going to stop you if you, you go that route and yeah. want to have another because that urge is always there, you know. And we, we ride motorcycles and stuff like that together. So um, he's a really good friend. So, you know. And that's what's important when you share your goals and having those goals in, in personal life because you just other people are going through the same struggles like you. Yeah, I agree. And if you're watching or listening, I feel like you should set goals in every aspect of your life because why would you want to have a couple areas that are solid and a couple areas that are lacking? Make sure that you're keeping yourself on point and the best version of yourself in every aspect of your life. Set those goals, man. They're extremely important. Challenge yourself. Hold yourself accountable. All right, last question, man. This is the most important question of the day. This is the Be The Best You <laughs> podcast, man. Hopefully I don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone out there today is watching or listening and you could give them one piece of advice or one piece of a motiv a motivation, what would it be? My motivation, what I would recommend re doing is, um, you know, maybe taking a, getting a picture of that goal and posting it on your uh, sink in the bathroom, maybe. Because you go into the bathroom every day. You're going to go there. I brush my teeth at night, <laughs> in the morning, and I see that thing every day. That's my motivation. I see it. Whether it's a, a big dream house, whether it's, a, a, you know, money or, or whatever the case may be. You know, but that's going to help you. That's my motivation. That's what I recommend doing. So people see that every day. And, and, and that's going to help you to keep focus. And just like a bodybuilder, you know, when I was young, I was like, man, I would have my magazines for bodybuilding and flex magazines. And uh, I see I'll post something on the walls and stuff like that. And, and um, I just saw that now with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. on that new uh, Netflix show that he's got or a series. And that's what he would do. He would just put posters of how he wanted to look in the future. Yeah, and that's that's what I would recommend doing. It's so helpful. It's funny you said that. A friend of ours, actually, she was on a boat with us the other day. She's lost like seventy five pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So in her gym, she has uh, she turned the garage in her house into a gym, and there's a big picture. I don't. Know, she blew it up pretty big. I mean, I was probably three foot by three foot, and it's on the wall. And it's a side by side picture of her. One is like two hundred five pounds. One is like one hundred and thirty five pounds, mm -hmm. right? And she puts those pictures up there so she never falls off the fitness wagon as a reminder, this is what you used to look like, this is what you look like now. Almost like, do you want to look like this or do you want to look like this? Because you know there's those days when you don't feel like working out or you're not motivated or you don't have that push or drive. We all go through those cycles. But if you're looking up there and you see that, that's a very hardcore reminder of, Oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this workout <laughs> because I I don't want to look like that. I don't want to look like that. So I, I thought it was super cool when I went in there and I was dropping off some equipment and I saw that up there and I was like, interesting. I think a lot more people would be less likely to fall off of the fitness wagon if they did something like that. Mm -hmm. You put a side by side of you know being 75 pounds heavier or 70 pounds heavier. That's a that's a great motivating factor right there. It's really cool that you said that. Um, do you do anything like that, Mamino? Do you have any pictures or anything, like goals and stuff that you 
Oh, uh, mostly I'm more of like a mentor person. I kind of have an idea where I want to be, what I want to be. You see, like I share almost everything with you. Yeah. And even though people think I'm delusional, I just believe like as long as you know you want it and how bad you want it, then you're willing to put in the work. You just have to hand it. It's not, it's not going to come for free. You Bro, have to hand it. when I was sitting in prison, I would think about standing on stages and doing motivational speaking in front of people. And at first, I didn't tell nobody that when I came home. Obviously, it was like starting at the very bottom. Of but like, and then I started to like make it and do things. And I remember the first time I told people, like, I'm going to start doing speeches and motivational speaking. People were looking at me like, literally, like all of a sudden, I just turned into an alien and I was speaking a foreign language. Like, what? But like they, what they didn't realize is that wasn't me just randomly deciding that I wanted to do that. I had sat in prison, studying and learning and waiting for the opportunity. And then when I came home, obviously I was below the ground. I had to crawl up to the ground, then stand up. And I was like, all right, it's time. And you know, Bambino, I don't know how many times Bambino has seen me speak somewhere, several times. I know he's recorded me the last couple of times, but you know, just being able to do what I envisioned years back that I was going to do before anybody knew who I was or believed in me, just having that thought and that mindset and that belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. Great idea. I'm glad that you brought that up. Now that you brought that up, I'm going to come up with some more goals and I'm going to hang a picture somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to steal that one from you, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really good one. I appreciate it. That's one of the better answers I've heard so far. But I appreciate both of you guys engaging with the episode today. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate the good answers and the dialogue. Man, listen, if you guys are watching or listening, please make sure you take the time to like, share, and subscribe. Leave us a comment. You guys are the driving force behind this show. Without you, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to continue to keep doing this. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Be The Best You podcast. Until next time, try until you fly.